Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Biz Talk Africa. I'm your host, Jason Schuster. My co-host, Videa Mike, is running just a, a few minutes behind, but she'll be here with us shortly. And I am here today with Suleiman uh, Marunga. Did I say that? Did I say that right? Yes, you did. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and uh, Suleiman is joining us. He is the founding member member of the Blockchain Association of Uganda. He's also the director at Muda. And I, I gather that you're an all around blockchain expert. It would be my guess, right? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Jason, for having me. I'm glad to be here today. And uh, and uh, I come today as uh, a board member of the Uganda Blockchain Association, an association that was set up to further the blockchain cause in Uganda and East Africa, uh, and also connect with other associations across Africa as a whole. I also come today as a director of MUDA, which is a cryptocurrency exchange, uh, OTC desk, and NFT platform. Beautiful. I've Beautiful. been in uh, blockchain for about three years, three, four years, uh, since um, early 2017. And uh, before that, I was in mobile money, uh, fintech. I don't know if you've heard of mobile money. It's uh, big in Africa, uh, some parts of Southeast Asia. I think um, everyone knows it as M-Pesa because Safaricom is the largest mobile money provider, but it's, it's basically money on your phone. Right. You know, um, people talk about uh, mobile payments. Mobile payments are coming. But in, in East Africa, we've had it for almost 10 years now. So wow. I've, that's where I started my, my fintech journey about eight years ago. I helped build the fintech industry in uh, Uganda. I was a CEO of Pegasus Technologies, which is uh, the, one of the largest uh, mobile money and fintech companies in Uganda. Um, by the time I left, we had grown the company to process more than $400 million annually in payments. And so um, that background was a very good platform for me to join the blockchain industry because once we had grown the mobile money industry, it was very mature. I was looking at what's next because technology is always changing. I know the trends are always changing, new things are coming up. And so when I did my research, I took some time off uh, from work, did my research. And it, when I landed on blockchain, it was very obvious that this is what is going to take us to the next level in terms of digital value, digital assets, digital payments. And so I just had to set up something in this space. And since 2017, um, I've been uh, doing my best to, to further the cause. I love it. I love it. Uh, I've, I've definitely noticed that uh, that Africa is a huge uh, place for where blockchain is exploding. There's a real need. And so I think that kind of drives innovation, right? But something else interesting is you, out of 150 plus guests that we've had on BizTalk, I think you're the very first person from Uganda. And we've had people <laughs> from all over Africa, but you think you're the very first from Uganda. So so wonderful to have you today um, and, and to learn about this. And by the way, for the audience, if you haven't guessed already, our topic today is blockchain in Africa and specifically opportunities uh, in blockchain in Africa. So uh, back to you, Suleiman. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you're working on right now? What uh, you, Obviously, you're kind of involved in several different projects, but what, what would you say is your main project that you're focusing on right now that's got you excited? Um, right now, we are running... A, so we've been setting up... Muda. Muda has been running as an OTC desk. Right. Um, when I got into crypto back in 2017, um, the bull run had just begun and everyone was excited. We need to get some Bitcoin. Bitcoin is going to the moon. How do we um, convert our shillings to, to, to Bitcoin so that we don't get left behind? And uh, the biggest problem I faced um, when I just got in was getting um, converting fiat to crypto. And I realized that it was not only a problem for myself, but it was a problem for very many people, you know, not only in Uganda, but across um, the developing world. And so the first thing we got at was to create liquidity 
you know, create a platform that was integrated with local payment methods because that was an issue. A lot of the large exchanges only had uh, Visa. The banking penetration in Africa is low. The card penetration is even lower. So it was, it's very difficult. It was very difficult at that time and it's still not as easy today, even though a lot of uh, innovation has been done in this space, integrating with local payment methods. So that was the first thing we, we, we got into, um, enabling um, people to easily get into the crypto sphere and get out of the, of, of the crypto sphere, you know, using local currencies. And Africa is a continent of more than 50 countries. How do we have liquidity, deep liquidity across all those regions? And so I, that's when I started uh, building cryptocurrency exchanges, uh, building OTC platforms. And so far, uh, we've managed to set up our OTC desk across 10 countries. We have deep liquidity across 10 countries um, across Africa. And we're glad to say today that we uh, have a deep, deep, deep liquidity. So we have really been able to solve that problem. And people are now able to transact from as little as 100 or $10 to as much as $2 million through the Muda platform. Uh, in a single transaction and so that's that, that that's our main uh and and core strategy right now core business right now but then we are also not look forgetting that the industry is moving so fast a day in crypto is like a year in in traditional finance you know right so there's DeFi. DeFi came up exploded last year it's still exploding this year nfts growing strong so we have all these different products that we're also now rolling out our apps are rolling out with DeFi solutions we are currently working on an nft project that we will announce soon so that's where we are right now how can we um bring the continent uh online as quickly as possible as easily as possible i love it i love it so you brought up several several cool topics that i'd like to, to dive into within that so the first one, just because our, our audience is incredibly diverse for this show, could you give me maybe a one to two minute synopsis, but maybe a short, shorter the better, on on DeFi? How would you explain DeFi to to you know your normal normal everyday person? Uh, DeFi is uh, decentralized finance, right? And when you start throwing out jargon, you start losing people, but right. What I would say is DeFi is person-to-person -person finance. Finance without a central party involved, you know. Um, we're used to finance where finance means going to the bank, going to a, a credit institution of sorts, and uh, you can only access finance or, fun or financial products through these institutions, right? So there's uh, usually a third party in between, right? Um, for example, banks hold custody of people's money and they use that money that they have, that their people have, um, trusted them with to lend to other people, right? So there's always a third party in a transaction of sorts. But what DeFi is is that it uses blockchain technology because it's it's person to person, peer to peer, to enable financial services to be provided. So anybody can become a bank and anybody can provide financial services because the blockchain is secure and the blockchain um, allows you to detail the rules of the transaction so it's it's as right. simple as that wow perfect very very good explanation appreciate that so moving on to 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 the next thing why why is blockchain exploding in africa so much why i mean it's not not just in adoption right because you, you talked a little bit about the need for for payments there's so many different countries and currencies but I, I'm also seeing a lot of innovation coming out of Africa. Why? Why is that? Um, blockchain is, I would say, blockchain is is just part of the entire wave um, because Africa usually skips um, different phases. That's what I would say. So, for example, the best way I could put it is that um, the debit card or the mobile phone, you know, um, the West had the landline network, um, telephone network rolled out um, extensively and there was a telephone in everyone's home, a landline phone in everyone's home. But Africa's completely skipped that phase, you know, and went straight to mobile. And so the mobile penetration is very high and there hardly any landlines anywhere. And so the same thing happens, is happening with FinTech, whereby card distribution and banking 
um, penetration is very low and did not um, pick mass adoption. But fintech products, mobile money, uh, and blockchain being an enabler is 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 what is and is, is what is being embraced by the population, and so that is what is taking um, shape right now. And so that's why a lot of the youth and a lot of the developers who are coming up are really embracing this technology because it's enabling them to achieve so much more. Absolutely, absolutely, and. And who who are some of the biggest players in Africa for 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 blockchain? Um, right now, I'd say it's really the exchanges. So exchanges like Luno, exchanges like uh, Binance, exchanges exchanges like Yellowcard. Um, a very good friend of mine, Chris uh, Muda. You know, um, the exchanges are really where the action is because a lot of people are discovering these products. A lot of people are discovering uh, this industry, and so their first mode of entry is the exchange. You know, um, I have a local currency. I need to get into crypto sphere, so they use an exchange, and then once they're into the exchange, then they start discovering all sorts of, of things. And so, right now, it's, it's the exchanges that are taking the lead. Excellent, perfect. Thank you for for sharing that. Okay, last thing before we kind of uh, kind of open up the discussion a little bit more and and talk about other opportunities. You said that you mentioned uh, was was NFTs, and that was something in uh, that was uh, a part of the uh, information that we used to kind of promote this uh, this show. Right? Was that uh, that NFTs are highly involved? What what does the NFT market look like in Africa right now, and why is it why is it important? Um, the NFT market, I would say, globally is uh, still coming up. It's still sh taking shape. And so because crypto is moving rapidly and the pace is similar across very many regions, I would say NFT in Africa looks similar like NFTs around the world. Uh, although uh, in, in the East um, and, and, and the West, NFTs have picked up much faster in terms of uh, adoption but uh, still in africa the products that are being utilized uh, and consumed as nfts are pretty much the same you know you have digital art you have all these collections coming out and so people are looking at that because they're seeing the market caps of these assets exponentially growing um, it's still new people are still learning what they are across the world uh, and people in africa are starting, starting to embrace it. so we recently had a collaboration with finance and the Uganda National Museum, Muda did a project um, with Binance and the Uganda National Museum where we we digitized the artifacts. You know, we said, what can we do to embrace African culture? And so we looked at the Uganda National Museum. They have quite an extensive collection of, of national treasures. So we created NFTs right. of those artifacts and we put them on the Binance marketplace as Binance was launching that. And it was picked up very well. We got a lot of interest. Uh, we made uh, um, quite a bit of sales, and that's what we're now seeing across the continent. You know, people are picking African uh, themed um, collections and creating them and launching them, and so it, it's starting to grow. And, and we're very excited to see what it's going to evolve into. That is really interesting. Now, where where are most of those sales coming from? Are they are they also coming from Africa or mostly outside of Africa that are interested in these really unique NFTs? Uh, it's very interesting. We saw um, a lot of traffic coming from Europe. You know, uh, the Germans were very interested in what we were doing. Uh, the British were very interested in what we were doing. And we were also very surprised that the South, Af South Americans were very interested in what we were doing. So there's, there's quite a bit of, of, of global appeal in, in, in these collections. Uh, so, and as well as Africa, you know, West Africa, South Africa. So it, it, it was very interesting to see that that people are embracing this. Absolutely. Uh, it's funny. I, I can't go, I can't go with even a few hours without reading something about NFTs uh, on, on LinkedIn or, or, or wherever. So it's, uh, it's definitely blowing up. Okay. Moving on. What are, what are some of the other really big opportunities in blockchain in Africa right now? Well, um, like I mentioned earlier, um, the financial infrastructure, you know, um, hasn't been set in stone like it has been in the West. And so we're seeing a lot of opportunity for anyone who is building 
better payment systems, you know, better ways to store money, better ways to transfer money, better ways to make payments. Uh, and blockchain really is uh, the internet of trust. You know, blockchain enables digital assets. Blockchain enables you to store your value digitally in a safe and secure manner. Blockchain allows you to make instant payments that are settled uh, instantly. So the biggest opportunity really is to fix the issues in the, in the financial industry. That's where we see um, a lot of value being generated. The second thing is the cryptocurrency industry is an emerging asset class. You know, I wrote an article about this about two or three years ago. And I, and I tried to explain to people the significance of digital assets and what it means going forward. We're a digital generation. Um, this generation knows digital uh, as their go-to. And so it means that this generation is going to make money digitally, this generation is going to store money digitally. And it means that investments are going to be done digitally as well. And right. just like every other previous asset class, real estate, stocks, bonds, grew from nascent, uh, industries to global um, asset classes, the cryptocurrency asset class is also going to do the same. And so there's an opportunity of a generation, an opportunity of a lifetime right now to ride the wave, you know, just like how gold went from dollars to over, over to thousands of dollars, the same thing is going to happen, you know. Gold went from a market cap of nothing to a market cap of more than $8 trillion. The same thing is going to happen. So crypto started as as almost nothing, and now it has reached $1 trillion. From our analysis, we believe the market cap is going to continue growing, and so that's a massive opportunity. So people have so many ways to tap into this. People, who, builders can build, um, investors can invest, speculators can speculate, artists can build, can grow, uh, and, and, and design and, and do what they need to do. So there's, there's a space for anyone who can think, uh, can take a bold step and, and, and you know, just jump in and, and, and help us grow this industry and take it forward. Wow. I love that. I love that. Um, for, for, you know, I, I hear sometimes, especially coming from, from people in traditional finance, they say, Oh, you know, cryptocurrency, there's too many currencies now. Uh, you know, how do you even keep track of all of them? As more come out, does it devalue the others? Like, what, what's your opinion on on that kind of thought process? Um, well, I, it's a good thing, I say, because uh, at the end of the day, with everything of value, there's always going to be someone trying to make um, a similar product. You know, it's just like mobile phones or social networks or anything else that that has been created that people find a new uh, find value in or use you know but the 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 best products will always make it to the top you know so for example um, in the cryptocurrency industry there are more than 12000 coins and tokens right now but bitcoin has a dominance of more than 40% for a reason and its dominance is going to stay around that you know ethereum around 12% and so the big players, the serious players, will maintain um, the, the, their market share. Uh, and the opportunity is just going to continue going, you know, because there has to be global use cases. There also have, there has to be local use cases. And so it's an open source industry. It's an industry for everyone. That's one of the best, uh, biggest appeals of cryptocurrency. You know, it is not um, segmenting anyone out of the industry. It's open to everyone, you know. It's an opportunity for anyone to who can think and create value to come in and create um, sustainable value for themselves. And so, as long as someone can create value, as long as you can deliver value, you can come in and make a living in this space. And so that's why I think it's a good thing that anyone can create a crypto. Uh, and cryptos can be accessed from anywhere around the world because ideas are not local. Ideas are global. Ideas, there's no monopoly of ideas. Ideas come from anywhere in the world. And any idea can shape any future for anyone. Any idea can impact anyone on, on, the, on the planet. So if you can do something for, that can take humanity forward, we welcome you and we encourage you and Muda is here to help you take it forward. I love it. I love it. So the way that you look at cryptocurrencies is not that, uh, you know, A, you know, there's, 
there's too many out there or anything like that. You see it as, look, the, the more the better. And you see cryptocurrency as a way to have maybe a more united uh, world economy, putting everybody on, on, on a better playing field. Is that, what I'm, is that kind of what you're getting at? Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. So, okay. Now those are obviously there, you know, you're talking about mostly opportunities on the, on the consumer side, you know, for, for someone who, oh, let me say it this way. Africa is young. Our, our guests on the show continually talk about us, talk with us about how the population of Africa is very, very young. And so the youth is kind of the, is the future. Let's say that I'm a young person in Africa and I want I'm 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 interested in in development and you know being a developer and I'm interested in blockchain. What are the biggest opportunities in front of me as a as a young developer going into blockchain? Where where should I be looking? Who should I should I look at doing my own thing? Should I look at trying to join a big firm? Should I what's the right process for a young person right now who wants to get involved in blockchain in some way shape or form? Um, that's a very good question, uh, Jason. Um, I would say the right thing for a young person to do right now is to join a team. You know, um, if you don't have any blockchain experience, join a team. Join a team that's doing something. Don't think of the short-term financial implications of, of joining that team. Just look at the experience you're going to gain. Um, the world has a shortage of developers. First of all, I mentioned we're in a digital generation right everything is going digital software is eating the world right and so yep. with that it means we need more builders um blockchain is not entirety of the software industry there's so many industries in software there's the cloud there's ai uh there's so many things coming up internet of things etc so every industry needs builders blockchain is just a subset of that uh within that um with that in mind People have to realize there's a, there's a shortage of developers globally. That's already a problem. So it means if you're a developer, you're you're um, a need. You're almost as good as as, as doctors. Whether the doctors are more important, but COVID showed us how important doctors are. But developers come second, in my opinion. So right. we need developers now within blockchain. There's even a bigger shortage. So it means that if you get that experience and you can show that you have value, you can develop value, you can build good blockchain products, you will definitely um, have the highest employment opportunities. And uh, right now the, the world is facing a crunch, jobs are low, so you need to put yourself in an, an advantage. So I, I encourage anyone, there are so many open source teams out there, there are so many um, teams looking for to expand, so many projects looking for members, so just join a team, get that experience, and then you can start building whatever you want. I love it. Great, great, wonderful advice. Um, I think as 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 Africa continues to become more connected, which I know, uh, you know, connectivity infrastructure is a is an issue that faces Africa. As that improves, hopefully that'll also open up even more opportunities. So the last the last segment that I want to dive into, and I think it'll probably take us pretty close to time, and then maybe closing thoughts is regulation. So this is uh, this is kind of the big thing that I keep seeing popping up regarding blockchain is governments talking about increasing regulation, uh, banks talking, you know, pushing for more regulation. You know how how do you see regulation helping, but also maybe threatening the this explosion of blockchain in Africa? Um. I think regulation is required because we need to have the mass join. And so we've done a good job in the blockchain industry in getting retail on board, but uh, we need to have institutions come in as well. We need right. products to be adopted by regulated industries. And so as a firm or an entity that designs and develops blockchain solutions that deals with cryptocurrencies, we get this um feedback all the time people asking are you regulated is this um lawful is it are you licensed what are the impacts you know um we have to we keep on having to explain the difference between blockchain and, and cryptocurrency 
Uh, as a blockchain association of Uganda, we keep on having discussions with the government to lobby to get policies in line that can enable institutions to come on board because institutions really drive um, adoption because they have the customers, they have the reach, and so that is something that 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 we see as a positive. Um, there's a lot of, of activities by different governments in the space. Uh, we we see the news all the time. You know, um, China has been banning Bitcoin every year for the last ten years, and and recently someone sent me an article and said, "Hey, are you scared? China has banned Bitcoin." I said, "At this point, Djibouti banning Bitcoin is more of a threat than China banning Bitcoin because people are <laughs> right. people are now immune to China banning Bitcoin." You know. It's like another week has passed as China banned Bitcoin. No, okay. So, That's right. That's so right. um, government needs to come on board. You know, we see some governments taking a positive tone with the with the industry. You know, Japan, um, the UAE, um, the US uh, seems to be positive. Other governments are moving slower, but we know with time, just like any technology. Um, everyone will come on board, and so it's just about waiting and building and and, and trying to help that adoption um, get uh, implemented. Okay, and and how would you say how how are African governments responding generally? A lot of African governments have decided to take a hands-off approach, right, okay. including Uganda at this time. So they have sent out memos telling the public. Uh, we, especially when it comes to cryptocurrencies, so when it comes to cryptocurrencies, they've taken a hands-off approach, saying that we do not, we are not regulating this right now. Um, you can you can participate in it at your own uh, risk, if I may use the word risk, right? Right. Uh, as far as blockchain is, is is concerned, blockchain as a technology, they are uh, they are embracing it and they're looking at how it can be utilized to implement better e-government solutions uh, and, and improve their current systems. So at least we see a number of governments have differentiated the difference between blockchain as a technology and cryptocurrency as an asset, and right. then are moving in that direction. And then some uh, very small subset have understood the impact of cryptocurrency. So for example, Nigeria uh, and South Africa. South Africa have made cryptocurrency legal uh, Nigeria have recently launched an e naira, you know, uh, right. which is now I think in, in public pilot, um, so a stable coin, and so slowly with time we we see um, that the, the trend changing. So before it was everything is bad, to now it's oh there's blockchain and there's crypto. To now uh, I think we can uh, start regulating crypto and and utilizing it within our system. So within the next five to seven years, we think um, majority of the continent will be on board. Beautiful. I love that. And well, I, I, I want to tip my hat to uh, to African regulators sir, for taking that approach. It seems like they're, you know, I, I, I think that their approach is a little bit more progressive than maybe some other other countries uh, at this time. So that's uh, <laughs> I that. um, so we're we're actually almost out of time. And this always happens to us. And there's so much more to talk about. Uh, so we'll have to have you back on the show again. Does does that sound good to you? I'll be glad to. It's a very awesome. fun show. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And uh, and uh, could you give us some closing thoughts? Just just final thoughts for the audience before we go. Till next time. Well, um, you've put me on the spot. Closing thoughts are always the I hardest. Know. But um, <laughs> I, would, I would I would I would really encourage everybody. You know, I I tell people I'm not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice. But um, we've reached um, the point of no return, you know, we've reached the point of, of uh, uh, critical mass in, in the cryptocurrency industry, in the blockchain industry. And uh, we see, um, I mean, software has been eating the world for the last 20 years, you know, and blockchain is, is now a very key component of that. Um, we see a lot of money moving towards cryptocurrencies. We see what's happening with, with, with traditional assets with traditional investments um, opportunities are getting smaller um, windows are closing and and the cryptocurrency industry is just an emerging market which is only going to grow bigger and stronger and so i always advise people look um take um time the first thing is to educate yourself understand what's happening in this space learn what's happening in this space 
just do get the basics out of the way. What is crypto? What is blockchain? What are NFTs? Get some, um, uh, subscribe to some of these um, articles and this website so that you can get notifications so that over time you get more comfortable with the industry and the new asset class. And then once you're comfortable and once you have enough information, because education is the most important um, um, investment you can make, then you start um, entering the space, you know. And I always advise people to just 5% of their portfolio, you know, not too much, 5%. And I say 5% because I look at it this way, risk-reward ratio. The risk, if, if you put 5% of your portfolio in crypto, and it goes south, you lose 5%. You lose 5% anyway in any, in any other thing. Right. But the reward is if crypto goes to the moon, like every crypto enthusiast says, then that 5% ends up becoming 60% of your overall portfolio. And uh, I think it's wise to always diversify. And um, that's why I say this is the time. Educate, then invest. Perfect. I love it. Suleiman, thank you so much for being here. This was a great session. Again, I feel like we've only scratched maybe the surface of what's here to talk about. So I look forward to to our next session uh, on this topic and uh, maybe expanding the topic a little bit uh, to some other areas. So thank you for being on the show. Can't wait for the next one. And uh, yeah, we'll see you. See you till next time. It's a pleasure, Jason. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> you as well. Thank you. And to our audience, okay. thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Take care.